Hi, and welcome to this first section on writing beautiful mathematics with LaTeX. What we'll do in this section is to first of all look at some basic math concepts. So we will explain the basic commands that you will use to write mathematics in LaTeX. To give you a few examples, we'll show you how to write square roots, the not equal sign as you can see here on the right. We will show you how to write the Greek letters such as pi, lambda or omega and all the others. And also how to use subscripts to get this 1-1 one, one on the a down below and the superscripts to get a to the second power. In addition to this, we have a few concepts that we want you to learn. The first is what is inline math and how you should use this. The second is what is display math and how you can use this. And thirdly, we want to show you an external tool called Dtaxify. Dtaxify will help you if you know what you want, but don't know the specific command in LaTeX. So we will cover all of this and more in this section on writing beautiful mathematics with LaTeX. Hi and welcome. So in this video we'll start writing mathematics in LaTeX, specifically inline mathematics. Before we do anything I want to import three packages. So I'll go up into the preamble and use the use package command. So I want to import AMS math, AMS symb, which is short for AMS symbols, and also AMS THM, which is short for AMS theorem. A lot of the math environments and math commands that we need will be contained in these three packages. As such, I just want to import them right away from the get-go, and then we can freely use all of their commands. So all throughout this section, we'll be using these packages. So let me move down into the main body of the document here, and let's start to write some inline math. So inline math is simply math written within the text. Intuitively, if I wanted to write a function, let's say f of x, equal to 5x plus 3. I could just write it as usual. However, if I recompile now and actually look at what's printed out, this is not really correctly formatted. So if you see here, you'll see the f of x and it looks kind of weird. And that's simply because LaTeX just treats this as text. For LaTeX to treat this as math, we actually have to enclose it in dollar sign symbols. Like this. This is an indication to LaTeX that we want to write inline math, meaning math within the text. Now, if I recompile, we see that it suddenly looks a lot more familiar. So now it looks correctly formatted. So notice that this inline math has a beginning marked by a dollar sign and an end marked also by a dollar sign. You need to remember to both add the beginning and end one. If I just do this and then try to recompile, I'll get an error. So what kind of symbols can we use inside here? Well, as you can see, you can use plus, minus. I can also use the division symbol, for instance, like this. So if I recompile, this will be formatted as usual division. So the usual arithmetic operations you have on your keyboard is still valid here. One exception is maybe if you use the product symbol or the star symbol on your keyboard, then you will get this. This might be what you want, but sometimes you also just want this to be a single dot and not really a star. And to do this, you'll just write a backslash and use the c dot command. The c dot command doesn't need any arguments. It stands for a centered dot. So now, if I recompile this, you can see here that it actually looks maybe more like what you wanted. You can also see that between the 5 here and the x, I've just written nothing, and then I will just format it as the 5 standing right next to the x, which might also be what you want. Except for the obvious things we can do, there are a lot of other commands we can use within inline math. Let me just explain two of them. The first one is the not equal sign. So here we have the equal sign, and how do you get the not equal? So for instance, so everyone knows that 2 plus 2, I want to write not equal to 5. So how do I do that? Then I will use a special command called backslash n eq, which is just an abbreviation for not equal. So when I render this, or recompile, I'll get precisely what I want. Another command that is used a lot is the square root command. So how do we make a square root? Let's do the square root of 9. For this I'll use a special command sqrt, and this does accept an argument, namely what I want to take the square root of. So in this case I want to take the square root of 9, 
I want to say that this is equal to three. Notice here that after the square root, since I want to add more text with the is, I need to close the inline math, then write is, then open the inline math, and then write three again. So now if we recompile, the square root, root of nine, is equal to three. We can see here that the square root, root of nine, is three. So the square root function actually accepts an optional argument as well. So this I can write after the command name, but before the main argument, this is enclosed in square brackets. This signifies if I want the usual square root or the third root, the fourth root, and so on. So for instance, I can write three here, and then I'll get the third root of nine instead of the second root of nine. These are just some of the commands you can use to write math inline. In the next couple of videos, we'll look at a lot more and also look at a different way of writing math called display math. Hi everyone! Right now I'm at Overleaf's documentation page for the list of Greek letters and math symbols, and here we'll see a complete overview of all the Greek letters and how we can write them in LaTeX. So maybe here the most familiar one is maybe pi, which is written as backslash pi, but you might also recognize other symbols. For instance, you might have had a calculus course where you've used epsilon and delta, you might have had a linear algebra course where you've used lambda for eigenvalues, or maybe you've used omega in electrical engineering, and so on. If you need a Greek letter in LaTeX, then here is a complete list of all the commands. So let's test this out in the editor. Now I'm back in the editor, and to write a Greek symbol, we can simply do an inline math, and then write a backslash, and let's do pi first. Once I recompile, you can now see that we get the nicely formatted Greek letter. The important thing about Greek letters is that there is a difference whether you use a small p here in pi or a big p. So if the first letter is capitalized, then you'll get the capitalized letter in the Greek alphabet. So this here is a capitalized pi. This holds for all of them. So just to see a different example. So another one is lambda. Here we can also see that Overleaf gives us two options, lambda with a small l or lambda with a capital L. And this is two different symbols. So let's first do the small l lambda. This gives us the small lambda, but if we change this to a big L, then we get the capital lambda, as you can see here. This is really all there is to say about Greek letters in LaTeX. You can just refer back to this table and use them whenever necessary. The second thing I want to briefly discuss is fractions. So you can see up here that we had 5x divided by 3. This is one way to write a fraction, but it's not really the only one. What I can also use is a special command. So this is an abbreviation of fraction, and you can see that this takes in two arguments. And the two arguments are the numerator and the denominator, meaning the thing on the top and the thing on the bottom. So I can also write 5x here in the first argument, and then 3 in the second. If I recompile this, this will actually not look precisely the same. If you just write the division symbol, it would look like this. But if you write the fraction, it would look like this. And it's a bit different. What's a bit annoying is that if you write a fraction thing, then this will actually make the next line push a bit down, because this needs some extra space. To avoid this, you'll typically use the fraction command like this in a display math environment. In the next video, we'll go through displayed math environments and how we can use them to get nicely formatted equations. Hi, so in this video we're going to discuss display math. So what is display math? Display math is essentially the same as inline math, except that it's displayed on a separate line. So first of all, how do we write this? So what you can do is just take an inline math expression, like this, copy it, and then instead of having these dollar signs signifying inline math, you can use a backslash and then a square bracket. In the beginning, you would use backslash open square bracket, while at the end, it would be a backslash closed square brackets. If I now recompile this, this will look very different from previously. Now you can see that we have what's called a display math. So it's displayed on a separate line. If I continue writing after this, like this, and recompile, this will just nicely be put down here so that we have a nice displayed math environment. Except that we're using different delimiters, meaning different opening and closing things here, instead of the dollar signs, everything more or less works as the same. 
And that's more or less all there is to say about it. So something I also wanted to show was subscripts and superscripts. So I can say a second degree polynomial is on the form. What I will do now is write a display math environment. So I'll use backslash open square bracket and I'll just write the backslash closed immediately and then go inside here. Let's write our function to its f of x. It's constant a times x squared. And how do we write squared, which is also called a superscript? This is just by the squared symbol on our keyboard. And here we should typically write to the second power, but actually I want this to be inside curly braces. For this number, it's not really necessary. It will be the same. If you have more than one thing inside here, then you really need these curly brackets. So we have this and we have plus b times x and plus a constant c. Let me know, go and recompile. And you can now see that we have a second degree polynomial. Instead of using ABC, we could have used A1, A2, and A3, where you use subscripts. So here, instead of using A, we can use, let's say, A2. Instead of B, we can use A1. And instead of C, we can use A0. This is just a different way to denote coefficients, meaning the numbers in front of the polynomial. Notice how we write this. So here I actually forgot an uh, underscore. So I've written this a underscore two, a underscore one, and a underscore zero. So if we compile this and look at the difference, this is a subscript two, a subscript one, and a subscript zero. Again, I'm choosing to put the square brackets here, although they're not strictly speaking needed. So if I just erase them like this, nothing will really change. You can see that it's exactly the same. The reason I have the square brackets is that if I wanted more than one subscript, then this is no longer possible. Say I wanted the subscript to be 0, 0. And if I do this, I don't get an error, but I certainly don't get what I want. So this is not what I intended. What I intended was for both the zeros to be subscripts. To make this happen, I'll just put the square brackets around them. Now if I recompile, you can see that it's properly formatted and I got both the subscripts under here. So although it's not needed for a single one, it's good practice just to put it there anyway. Hi, and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll go through a few trigonometric functions in LaTeX before going to an external tool called dtexify. For the usual trigonometric functions, you can write a backslash. So first of all, I'm going into an inline math mode. Then I can write backslash sine and this accepts the argument you want to put in. So for instance, sine of two. So let's now recompile this. You can now see here that we get sine of two, correctly formatted. Sometimes sine is also written with parentheses. So instead of writing curly brackets here, you can also just write parentheses and then we'll get sine of two, like this. So here you can see now that you get the correct parentheses. If you choose to write a sine function without the backslash here, then you're not really applying a command. And you'll see the difference now. If you look here, then the text is all skewed because usual text is skewed in math mode. So if you're using sine or cosine or any of the other trigonometric functions, make sure to have the backslash here so that you actually call the command sine. So sine is of course one option. We also have cosine. This is written with a backslash cosine. And then inside here, let's write, for instance, pi. This is equal to negative one. So again, if we recompile now, you'll see that everything looks really nice. Of course, we can also use this with the display math environment. So let's say an important, an important trigonometric identity is, and now I'll go into math mode for the display. But what might also be very useful for you is to just add a line break here so that we start a new line. This will not affect the display at all. It will just make it easier for us to read. So we can also do it up here, like this, and like this. Having these on a separate lines here in the editor will make it a lot easier, at least for me, to read it. So here I can write cosine of x and then squared plus sine of x squared. And notice that I have the squares inside curly brackets. This is not strictly necessary here, but it's a good practice. This will always be equal to one. A 
something that is slightly boring but a bit useful is to know about punctuation. Here I put the punctuation inside the environment, so you'll see it appear right here. However, if I put it outside, then I exit display mode, and actually the punctuation disappears and it ends up here, if you can see it. This does not look good at all. So make sure if you're in display setting, if you want your punctuation, then put it inside. And as always in LaTeX, if you're unsure, then just compile it, see how it looks. If it looks great, then awesome. If it doesn't, then change something. Now I'm at an online tool called Detaxify. You can find a link in the description and you can also easily find it by just googling Detaxify. This is an online tool to help us find symbols in LaTeX. There is no one in the world who remembers all of the LaTeX commands, so it's really useful for us to be able to just draw a symbol and then Detaxify will try to come up with options for us to use. Say I want to get a subset symbol in my LaTeX document. I know how a subset symbol looks, but I'm not really sure what the precise command is. So what I can just do is go here and then try to draw it. The drawing will not be very good if you're on a computer and just use the usual mouse, but still, even though it's pretty bad, I get a lot of options and this is actually the one I want. So here I can see that it's written as a subset EQ, which is probably an abbreviation for subset equation. Even more likely is subset and equality, because this is indicating that it's either a proper subset or is it an ordinary subset. And this thing here, stating math mode, essentially says to you, use this either in an inline math or display math mode. Do not use it in a text mode. And we can write now, we have that. Let's open an inline math mode. A is a subset of B. So now I can write backslash subset EQ, B, and then recompile this, we can now see that we get a subset. You should also notice that we got this paragraph indentation here, and this is because we have an empty space here. So if I just remove this and recompile, you'll see that this disappears. The fact that the subset command is a math mode command means that I can have it inside math mode, but if I try to just copy this and place it somewhere in the text, like this, and recompile, then actually this will be a problem and I'll get an error message. And I will actually get this here in a document, looks fine, but suddenly the rest does not look fine. That's because LaTeX suddenly tries to make this into a math environment, try to understand what I'm really doing here, and doesn't really figure it out. So it gives me an error and it, the formatting doesn't look good at all with the next word. Make sure that commands that are used in math mode, such as subset EQ, or sine and cosine and square root that are actually used inside the math mode and not inside the text. Hi, I wanted to give you a small exercise so that you can become comfortable with the material about math we have covered. So here's an exercise where I essentially want you to just recreate what you see on the screen here. This is just a basic fact about second order polynomials and their zeros. The math is not really important for us at all. What's important is to try to recreate this thing here. So what will you need? Here we have an inline math statement with some superscript. Here you have a list, so you need to look back on lists from the previous section with Stina. You also have two display math modes here. You have a square root. You have a fraction thing, so you need to look back on the fraction command, and also you have this plus minus thing. To actually get a plus minus is not really obvious. I encourage you to either Google it or use the Detexify site that I showed you earlier to figure out how to write this in LaTeX. So you'll find a solution attached in the description of this video. I hope this goes well and we'll see you in the next videos.